Good afternoon, good afternoon to all the righteous seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, my new uh, uh, platform on Rumble. Um, you can follow me as I follow Jesus. And um, we're going to get into the Word today a little bit uh, in Revelation 2 and uh, talk about some things. But you can follow me. Uh, at Power in His Presence International, <clears throat> YouTube Apostle Stephen Drake, um, here on Rumble, which is Elijah4031, I believe, or Apostle Stephen Drake. TikTok, Elijah4031. Instagram, Stephen Drake 45 And uh, share this video, if you would, please. Uh, you know, I tell you, I I'm excited uh, just to be a part of the family of God and, and um, the Lord has really uh, just done uh, a miracle in my life, my friend. I tell you, he called me out of a lifestyle of drugs and, uh, you know, witchcraft and uh, all those various different things. You know, I mean, uh, I, I can I can remember uh, so clearly that, you know, uh, I struggled with, you know, a spirit of suicide uh, and, you know, uh, uh, just so many demonic spirits um, that I was tormented. You know, I was tormented even as a, a, a little boy uh, that I believe that the devil, he knows, um, beloved, he knows uh, uh, the plan of God for my life. He knows the plan of God for your life. And we have uh, angels that are assigned to each and every one of us in the heavenly angelic realm and here in the earthly angelic realm. And uh, I, I tell you, I'm uh, called and commissioned to battle the Antichrist, the devil, and the false prophet. And uh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. Uh, I tell you, I don't know how, how many of y'all, uh, well, to this channel is new, probably none of y'all, but uh, I'm one of the final witnesses by the grace of God, um, and uh, I'm excited to be on the earth today because there's nothing more exciting than being a part of the family of God, being active, involved in the Great Commission. And when you do that, you uh you summon all of the the heavenly angels and you have the holy spirit uh that's going to lead guide protect um give you the words he puts the words in your mouth uh beloved and i just want to encourage uh somebody today just by coming on here and sharing a little bit you know um no matter what kind of walk of life you may find yourself you know, um, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and uh, He's coming soon. Bet that. Um, you know, and 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 here I'm I'm blessed to live in the most uh, blessed nation on earth. Uh, praise God! I thank God for the United States of America. Uh, I thank God for the nations around the world who I minister uh, with and partner with I've partnered with churches in Pakistan and in Africa and uh, uh, I, I just I tell you I love seeing the glory of God and but right now I'm in an area a season of my ministry where it's not such so glorious you know um, but that's this is the point in time and season that I'm in right now and you know you may be, I may be talking to somebody that, that gets a hold of this and um, you, you don't feel like, you know, you're in the best uh, uh, of what God would have for you to be in at this particular juncture in your life. And I want to encourage you because, my friend, I tell you, just keep standing in faith on the unshakable foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, the Bible says that in Psalm 37, 4, that if you delight yourself in the Lord, He'll give you 
the desires of your heart. And um, I don't know what the desires of your heart are. But I'll tell you this. When you uh, have an encounter with the Lord Jesus uh, and He begins to um, minister to you in your life, um, He gives you the keys to the kingdom. And uh, I want to help somebody understand, you know, uh, your identity, your your call, um, and and the only way that you can uh, understand your identity is if you're in the Word of God. Um, and you know, it's so easy to get discouraged in this life and just want to throw in the towel. My friend, I tell you, um, I, I tried to kill myself. So many times, uh, I I was successful, uh, but the Lord ra- raised me from the dead, just like the Lord is going to raise me from the dead uh, uh, in in the end time uh, that we're in. Um, and I tell you, I just want to read some things uh, uh, out of the Word of God, and I want to share with you kind of what's going on uh, prophetically with the church in America and uh you know I love the church. I, I, I don't I don't want to beat up on her um because I'm a part of the body of Christ. But I tell you what, the Lord is not able to move like he wants to move in many of our congregations and churches because of religious tradition. And the work that the Lord's gonna do in these last days with his glory is uh, uh, especially for people that have been in ministry 40, 50, 60 years uh, um, that have put God in a box, you know, and, and they'll, they'll say the Lord, you know, uh, will work in this area, but he won't work in that area. And he's fixing to break all your boxes. Um, and, you know, Men who are educated and uh, they have, you know, these theological degrees. I have no problem with people that have degrees or uh, the study of theology. But I'll tell you this. uh, The danger in that is many people would rather have good theology, good doctrine, rather than an encounter with Jesus. And what I mean by that is uh, they, they read the Bible Many times, like a textbook, they haven't been um, through uh, much, you know, um, to be able to really say distinctively, you know, that they understand what really is going on and how God is moving in these last days. And they make it about education and ordination and certificates and uh, you know, you're, if you're recognized by uh, your denomination as a pastor, well, that's what makes you a pastor. And, you know, this and that. they got so many things out of whack, but it is what it is. Listen, you're, if you're called, uh, then you're called. And, you know, uh, you know, for me, I'm called uh, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't receive this as a revelation of man, but a revelation of Jesus Christ when he came to me. And I spent three and a half days with the Lord. And so, um, anyways, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about revelation. And I want to point some things out to you. You know, there are seven churches mentioned in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. That's the church of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And out of the seven churches, five were rebuked. And two, two of those were, um, were, were commended. And, um, you know, they, they were told of the Lord that, that they, you know, were, had done a good job. And, uh, the Lord makes several, um, um, references uh, uh, in threats, if you will. Uh, when the Lord Jesus threatens, my friend, uh, for when, for instance, he said, um, 
he would give them correction and he would say, if you, if you, do the, if you don't do this, I'm going to come and remove your candlestick. Well, uh, the Lord doesn't make an idle threat. And uh, he has removed the candlestick of uh, the churches. And uh, he's given me uh, one of those candlesticks. And, um, and, and there's a remnant that's on the earth uh, that's with me, that's fighting with me. Uh, uh, and they're given the candlestick as well. And what I mean by that is, see, the Lord, uh, He, you know, you can be in ministry for eons, and uh, but if you don't follow the Holy Spirit, um, well, the Lord, He doesn't have use for you. Uh, uh, he loves you. He doesn't forget your labor of love. But um, it, when, when you uh, are no longer of use to the Lord, well, He just fires you. He fires you and uh, uh, he, he moves on. And He, and he goes and He finds um, people that are willing uh, to speak the truth in love and that uh, aren't afraid uh, to stand up to man and government and denominations and, um, you know, I mean, when the Lord uh, ordains you an apostle or a prophet, He does that before your mother's, uh, before you were even born. And, and not only that, but He sanctifies you. You can read that in Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verse 5. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, uh, I ordained you a prophet to the nations and I sanctified you. Right? And um, so I've been, you know, in the trenches serving with the Lord for eons. Because when, you know, I grew up in the church, when I grew up in the church, uh, the way I did, I, I, I knew, I knew that there was more. I knew that the things that I, were revealed to me, you know, I, I grew up in ministry and I love my mom and dad. Uh, I love the denomination that, that I came out of, which was the Baptist, uh, uh, Southern Baptist denomination. Um, but all through growing up and being involved in ministry, uh, uh, I was hurt by the people of God. And um, really, I mean, it's, it, it, it was my own fault. I, I, you know, would never want my, my parents or, you know, anybody affiliated with the Baptist denomination uh, to feel any kind of condemnation. You go through things in life um, and, and it, you're, you're the natural... Uh, response would be to uh to blame the church to blame the denomination i I could blame mom and dad um you know i i I, the list goes on and on you know people you're either a victim or you're uh, uh gonna walk and reign victorious through the one man jesus christ and this is what the lord jesus had to teach me um, I, uh, you know, I, I told the church, uh, my mom and dad, the church, the Holy Spirit, that they could go to hell. Uh, I, I didn't want anything to do with them because I was bitter. I let bitterness, uh, anger control me and, and I wanted to know where the real power was. So I went out and I prayed to the devil and, uh, and he answered you know, by, by the time uh, I was um, 19, I was facing 20 years to life in prison for shooting at somebody. Uh, he shot at me uh, first, and it was a, a rival uh, drug dealer uh, there in Gainesville, Florida when I was in college. And I was selling ecstasy and crystal meth. And, you know, um, you know that was my dream. And uh, I, I was just so bitter and angry that I was going to uh, live how I wanted to live 
And I was going to do that totally ignoring the Holy Spirit and ignoring the, the background that I came out of. I can remember four days before um, I shot at this man and tried to kill him. Um, I told my mom, she, she would always call me and she would pray and, uh, uh, with me and she'd mention the Holy Spirit and stuff and, and, and I'd had enough. I, I told my mom, look, I love you, but don't call me. I, I don't want to hear about the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hear about anything you have to say. You know what I do. You know that I sell drugs. This is what I want to do. So just do me a favor. Uh, I love you, but uh, don't call me anymore. Uh, um, just consider me dead. And uh, I'll never forget, my mom started to cry. And anytime my mom cries, even to this day, I have a soft spot. And, and I started to cry. Um, and I, but I knew within myself, as this conversation was, was taking place, like something was wrong with me. I, but I would just bottle it down. I would just, you know, bottle it down and and uh, suppress those feelings um, because I didn't know how to deal with them. I didn't know how to vent to the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I was never uh, taught my authority in Christ. I, I, I was never taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, where I can pray in tongues and send angels to war and invent. To the Holy Spirit. And um, I'll never forget what she said to me. She said, Stephen, she said, the next time I see you, she said, you'll be in a coffin uh, or you'll be behind bars. And four days later, sure enough, uh, uh, my mom was looking at me through uh, a glass window. And, uh, you know, I wasn't even grateful to see her. I, I looked at her and my dad, and I and I said, I said, what are the hell, what, what the hell are you doing here? I I I don't want you, you know, uh, uh, here. I I don't want you a part of my life. I didn't call you. I I don't want your help at, uh, as an attorney. I I made my bed. I'm gonna lay in it, you know. And this is how cocky and angry I, I was. And um, you know, I tell you. I, I just thank God for his his love, you know, and and, and the reason that uh, the Lord Jesus had to come to me is because, um, well, I, I mean, he called me to be an apostle and and, you know, the 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 lifestyle of of an apostle, um, I mean, well, we're just really lunatics um the lord the lord saves us and sets us apart because you know the world we're spectacles to the world to angels and to men and uh you know uh, uh my testimony i mean i could talk for hours about you know the things that i exposed myself when it comes to uh being involved in Drugs and uh, witches and warlocks and satanic uh, rituals and uh, I was just um, just totally out there and I had this ridiculous uh, faith, you know, that I, I, I was invincible. I knew God was with me and. Um, um, I, I was, I knew eventually that I would probably be used of the Lord, but, you know, I say all that, you know, just, uh, to maybe help somebody because I'll tell you what, no matter, uh, how many years you may feel like you've wasted, um, the Lord can redeem the time. The Lord can redeem the time because He's the Lord of time and space. And He's in the redeeming business. And so, I, I just want to uh, uh, get back to Revelation real quick. And I'm going to point something out to you, right? It says, uh, 
Revelation 2, chapter 2, verse 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I received of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but the morning star in the Bible is, uh, is the devil. The morning star in the Bible is the devil. Jesus Christ is the bright and morning star, right? But, um, you know, the way that the church is going to be able to get the morning star, crush Satan under our feet, is if we make the Great Commission, which is what Jesus delegated His authority for us to do in Matthew 28, which is go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And it says that these signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out demons. They will speak with other tongues. They'll heal the sick. They'll raise the dead. And, you know, just to, to give you some a little food for thought, um, what, what is it going to take to get God's people to unify? To unify. Um, COVID-19 hasn't done it. You know, when September 11th uh, uh, happened and the Twin Towers were bombed um, and 3,000 people were killed, um, the churches for a month were packed. And, uh, you know, I tell you, now, you know, because of COVID... The churches have partnered with the government and allowed the government to put all these rules and regulations and fear tactics. And so half the church doesn't even meet anymore. This is why the Lord's wanting me to come on social media media platform. Uh, but we do not need to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And... And I'll tell you this, uh, for those of you that may have gotten mad that I said um, the Lord's given me the candlestick, I don't say that in arrogance. I say it in all humility. Uh, as one of the final witnesses, my friend, I, I just I have tremendous power and authority in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know who I am in Christ. I know what God's called me to do, but I can't do it without the body. I can't do it without the body. And you know what? Jesus can't either. Jesus can't either. Now, many many theologians will say, well, he's got Jesus, you know, can do uh he don't need us to unify uh um, you know, but yes he does. And the reason being is 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 uh he doesn't want us to come behind in any gift. And he and, and the Bible says that you know, in Ephesians 4, that we need, we should have the attitude of coming into the unity of the Spirit. The unity of the Spirit. You know, there's not a unity of the Spirit in the body of Christ today because there's so many schisms and isms and divisions. You know, you can't even talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, about praying in tongues. Uh, without people getting offended, or or even uh, talk about certain doctrinal issues, because um, because theologians and many pastors and leaders they they think well they figured a God they figured God out. You know they they say uh, and ha they have taught uh, a large part of the church uh, in America that 
the gift of the Holy Spirit is irrelevant. That the gifts of the Holy Spirit aren't for today. Um, that, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire and the evidence of speaking in tongues um, isn't for everybody. You know, I mean, I'm talking about world-renowned theologians, right? That have been in ministry for years. And they haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. And how they have survived um, as long as they have, it's by the grace of God. Because you can't walk in true power without the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. You can't. If you can't pray in the Holy Spirit, you know, if you can't pray in tongues, well then, you don't have any power. I mean, you just don't have any power. You you can't, you're not sending angels to war. And, and, you know, the, the, the thing that, that burdens my heart the most is uh, Jesus told uh, the churches in Revelation, He says, you, you, you've lost your first love. You know, and you say you have, you have need of nothing, but you're poor, wretched, naked, blind. You're lukewarm. And this is where we are, folks. I tell you, I, I just it just blows me away. And uh, I, I've, I've stepped away from uh, Facebook for a little bit. But uh, I tell you, I, I pray for Afghanistan and for the people of Afghanistan and for the United States of America and the nations around the world because the answer is the gospel. The answer is the gospel. And the gospel, uh, it, 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 it makes you um, prosper in every way. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in every way. And, uh, you know, I pray that, that whoever gets a hold of this video would be blessed by it, encouraged by it. And... You would put the Lord Jesus first in everything that you do. And no matter what comes your way, to stand in faith on the promises of the Word of God, which are yes and amen. You know, uh, I, I pray that if you've been sick, that the Lord will heal you. You know, uh, I, I really believe that it, it, it's probably everybody in the United States uh, and around the world, for that matter, is going to get covid uh, 19, um, and you don't need to be fearful about that. You know, if you choose to get the vaccine, that's fine. Uh, I, I won't, I, I won't get tested. I won't get a vaccine. I've got the blood of Jesus as my vaccine, but I tell you what, I'm praying for the churches and, um, I, I pray that you'll pray for, for my ministry and, um, you know, that, that the body of Christ unifies, you know, that will unify because I believe there's a corporate anointing and by that corporate anointing that takes place, uh, we could rebuke COVID-19. We could change a lot of things, uh, in the world today, especially in America. And, um, so God bless you. I love you, and uh, I pray that if you would, uh, uh, that you'd receive Jesus Christ in your heart and life if you haven't, because He's coming soon. Uh, just believe that He died, that He was buried, and on the third day He rose from the grave, and He forgives you of your sin, past, present, future. He wants to heal your body, and so. You, you just confess with your mouth, believe in your heart unto righteousness, and, and, and you are saved. And so, I tell you, I love you. Uh, I, I'm praying for you. God bless you. Stay tuned in um, to, uh, to these videos. I'm going to go in depth and, and teach more. But uh, the nations are an, are an inheritance for us. And so, uh, I love you guys. 
And God bless you.